Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a Coptic stitch book again. These are jelly prints that I found when I was digging around for something else. I did this, um, I did the jelly pen prints quite a while ago and put them in a pile. And when I made them, I only printed, all the papers I found were only printed on one side. So I took two printed papers, put them back to back and zigzagged them on the sewing machine. Then I took random pieces of small scrap paper and made pockets and sewed some of those and glued some of those onto the signatures. Here I am. Um, I marked, I don't know why I didn't turn the camera on, but I marked the uh, places to put the holes for the book. Then I took a box out of my stash, cut it in three sections, of which I was only going to use two. And there are some gel random jelly prints that I had in a drawer, and I decided to use those to cover the book with. The paper that, I'm, that I used for jelly prints was stuff when I cleaned out my mom's house. She had these paper calendars with no dates or months on them, but they had days of the week. She had like seven or eight of those pads, and I just jelly printed the daylights out of them. I think I have one pad now that is not jelly printed. All right, so I'm going to use PVA glue if I can get the lid off. I roughed up the um, chicken biscuit box with a acrylic nail file from Dollar Tree to get the shiny, sizey stuff off. There I am taking a really ugly paintbrush and I'm using it to spread the PVA out with. I find that I tear up the paper if I use a credit card because I'm really tough. When I, I guess I put too much pressure on it. I'm just going to mail that upside down, uh, glue that upside down. Sometimes it will take a credit card after I've glued it on there and give it just a little squeegee effect. And I have been known to rip the paper. So go figure, right? <laughs> Again, spreading the PVA. I like PVA glue since I discovered it. I do like using it. It's not cheap, but I think it's really good glue. Spreading it with a paintbrush is really easy. The credit card thing, I, I don't know. It doesn't always work for me. Now this is where it gets really tricky. I take these and I put them underneath something really heavy for about three or four hours. Then I want to poke the holes in my signatures. I saw somebody who made a, um, uh, I can't remember what you call it, but anyway, it's a book cradle and you take can take it apart and it lays flat. My husband made it out of leftover wood he found out in our shed. And you just slip it on the ends and it has a painter's tape and you have to have a piece of tape in it to give resistance when you poke holes. And when it gets too ugly, you pull the tape off and you put a new piece on. And I have done that once or twice already. So you take your signatures after you've marked them on the outside with the marker, which I used, um, I don't know, I think I might have used a Sharpie, I don't remember. And you take, I take the signature and I fold it inside out so I can see the black dots on the inside. So I refold them, set them down in the cradle, and get a pokey tool and just poke through the tape um, where the black, dot, the black dots are, because that's where the holes in the book are going to be. And this just, is, I just fast forward this, and I'm just showing, the, showing you that I'm poking the holes through all the signatures that I managed to get together. I like doing it this way. I think it's really simple and I can unfold the book cradle and put it away. It doesn't take up any space. I do like it. All right, here I am with all the holes poked in the signatures and they expand out after they have the holes poked in them. But I'm trying to make them even so they're ready to go. And then I take bull clips and I put them, usually take the bull clips and put them together while I store them so they kind of flatten out. 
right? I bought some number eight cotton DNC thread. No, that's number five cotton DNC thread. But I like to use that to sew books together. As much as I like the linen, it's a little too thin. Is that number eight or number five? No, it's number five. Number five used to come in a ball and they don't do it that way anymore. Now they put it in um, a hank. Just like you do, you buy yarn. You have to wrap it around something and use it, pull it, and it's an unholy mess. <laughs> so you have, you have to undo it and then you have to unwind it. Then you got to cut the strings and you're going to have to roll it in a ball or figure out some way to make it easy to unravel and it is not easy and about the time you think you got you figured out there's a knot jerked in it I thought I was so smart by laying it nice and flat and really being careful with it and for a while it goes well you just didn't see what happened behind the scenes <laughs> later on all right, so I cut it. I'm gonna put it through the needle. In a book class that I took, they said that it should be not too tight putting the thread through the eye of the needle, but if it's too big, that probably means you need to go down a needle size. I'm raking it through the uh, beeswax. You can find these little things everywhere. They're just a sewing notion. Now comes the uh, the part where I finished the books off and I cut a lot of this out of the video because uh, it was a nightmare. I have since bought something that will help the corner business and I'll show those in another video. They're plastic. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but they help you figure out your corners better instead of me having to cut it like this and getting another tool to try to figure it out. And if you mess it up, your corners don't match, blah, blah, blah. I'm not very good at this part, the corners. Oh, excuse me. I've done like five or six different people's ways of doing it. And I'm not so good at it. See, and for me, that was too much. So then I got another tool and I kind of marked it with the tool and then cut it. And as it turned out, I still couldn't get them to match. You know, some days it's just, <laughs> it just doesn't work. I'm trying to figure out how to get them all down again with PVA. This whole process took over two hours. And aren't you glad I didn't make you watch all of it? <laughs> There I just said, oh, forget it. And I just cut the scissors. And of course, then my corners didn't match. When you second guess yourself, usually the second guess is the bad one. I figured, oh, forget it. And one book side is a little bit larger than the other after all of that. There's the bull clips. Now I've got to mark where I'm going to put the holes in the covers. There's the measurements for the covers. I still have to put paper on the inside cover. I don't like leaving it bare like that. And I'm trying all these different pages in and don't you know they're too short. <laughs> Go figure. Well, I finally got it figured out and mailed te and uh, glued text on there. And then when I poked the holes, I almost turned one of the text upside down. You really got to pay attention when you poke holes and stuff because you can make silly mistakes. I bought myself some new clips. They're for sewing. I think there was a hundred in the bag and I got them off of Amazon. See, I, maybe I did put it upside down. I'm looking and thinking, uh-oh, don't mess it up. <laughs> That's why I clipped them together so I wouldn't forget. 
which side of the text is up and which is down. And as it was, I made the back, the front, the front, the back, and the. All right, so now we're going to try to put holes in it. When I did it, I just, I'm not comfortable using this thing to do holes because I can't see what I'm doing. So then I decide I'm not using that. So at least through this, it has the hole right in the top where you can look down where it is. And if you, if you use a magic marker to mark the hole on the, the board, then you can see where it is through that little hole there that you're on top of the black dot you left. Of course, you always shake all that mess out of there because, you know, it gets stuck. Now I'm erasing the pencil marks because everything's marked with the pencil. You don't want to leave that behind. And of course, I did it on the wrong side. All right, so now I'm going to sew those signatures in that I threaded the needle for. I had a devil of a time with this. I did cut some of it out. Here are the eyelets. I couldn't decide between silver and gold. I think I ended up using silver. And I did, I did buy the big eyelets, the three eighths, isn't it three eighths? The little ones are just too small to get through um, some of that board. You mash it down and you hope that it goes flat on the other side. And I did it more than once a couple times on different ones. I did not cover them up on the uh, back side with an, um, what do they call it? A, I can't think of what the term is, the ring saver, whatever it is, you, you know, eyelet thingies. You put them over the metal part to kind of save your paper. I did not do that. Completely forgot to do it. And you can make your own. I bought a puncher. Do I do it? No. Now we're going to do the back side. This is easy compared to the sewing adventures I went through putting this thing together. And then one of them, I could not get the silly thing to go in. I struggled with it. I twisted, turned it, and I don't know. didn't go well. I don't know what I'm doing with the, the marker. I've forgotten because I did. I filmed this back in March and forgot that I need to do a voiceover, and I had a video. I have all these things that will put holes in them and mash the eyelets in, and I swear I struggle with every one of them, even the kind where you pound them in. All right, we're going to try to sew this book together. And I struggled. Lord knows. I have made enough of these silly Coptic stitch books, and I still struggle with it because I pull too tight. And then other times it's loosey-goosey. This one's going to be a little more loosey-goosey. And I did, honestly, I did it on purpose. Because if I want to glue anything, I want the book to be able to expand just a little bit. I don't want it to have alligator mouth, big, huge. If you really want a good, a good video, and I say this every time I talk about Coptic Stitch, you want a good video, go to Sea Lemon's website or uh, YouTube channel and look under there for Coptic bindings. She does several different versions. She does one. See, look, see, I had to pull it out. What a mess. I ruined that signature and then had to start with a different one. I told you it was Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Anyway, so she does one needle Coptic and she's got a double needle Coptic on there too. We use two needles. I barely mastered one. I don't know if I can bear the thought of using two. <laughs> I don't know if I can be trusted not to rip it all to shreds. All right, there I am starting all over again. I think the first signature with the cover and the last signature with the back cover are always the ones that give me the most headache. Because I can never remember what order they go in because you try to sew both of them in there at the same time. 
and I can never remember how to do it. I always have to go back and look at her, um, her video. I ripped one of the pages because I pulled too tight and it ripped from the first hole to the middle hole. So I took washi tape and I had to tape over the edge of the signature because otherwise that would have been signature number two down the drain. So I just took the pink washi tape and stuck it on there. I was not too happy about that happening, but it's my own fault. I pulled it too tight and it just slid right down the thread, slid down like a knife through a slice of bread right down to the middle hole. We ran out of string thread, so now we had to do a second one. I remember I had problems with this one too because as smart as I thought I was, I pulled the, uh, the knot popped through because I pulled too tight. And then on another part of it, I completely missed one of the signatures. So then I had to pull it all out and start all over again. Well, I pulled out the, the, set, the second section of thread. I had to cut it all out, start all over again. And then, of course, you know, stuff ties in knots and at one point, I had to turn off the camera and walk away from the book because I was so flustered. And when you get to that point, you want to finish it so bad, but your patience is really thin. And so it's a good it's good to walk away. I do that with my knitting, too. I get to the point where I'm like, I can't take this anymore. I want to finish, but maybe tomorrow would be better. So. Sometimes I just get up, there I am, the knot pulled through, or I missed something in this one. <laughs> when I put my hand down there, it's like, swear word, swear word, swear word, swear word. And I tried to figure out as best I could how to fix it. And my conclusion was, rip it out and start all over. You haven't gone that far. You should just rip, cut it out and start all over. I tried and it did not work. I'm looking at it going, uh, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't think so. I'm thinking I'm going to go on to the next one because I know the first one didn't work. So I'm just going to make it worse. Look, here we are looking at it again. Nope, not going to work. What can I do to fix it? Cut my losses. Oh, try to feed it back through. Nope, that's not going to work because then I split the thread. Does this remind you of matte medium on a paper bowl? <laughs> oh, no. There were a lot of signatures in this. After the second time of ripping it out, I think there's still one more signature that I didn't quite get sewn in there and I left it. I was like, I am not tearing this part a third time. That's it, I'm done. It's for me, so I don't really care. I'm sewing that last signature in and I realized, oops, I didn't do the cover. Huh, there we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Some days it does not, it just doesn't work. It doesn't matter what you do or how hard you try. It is not going to work. It's just not your day. The day I filmed this was not my day. Oopsie, took it apart. <laughs> Started all over. You know, the one thing I really learned from my mistakes, no, not really. <laughs> I keep making the same ones over and over. There we go. I forgot to sew the signature and the cover on at the same time. Might not be the way Sea Lemon does it, but it did get finished. And it is on there. 
at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sew it on. I don't care. I'm going to just finish it because I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> almost done I keep looking at that one spot that I missed you know it's just like in knitting you see one mistake you think oh nobody see it you give it to another knitter and they go oh look <laughs> or they'll try to be discreet and kind of, they look at it you see them looking at it and you're like oh she found my mistake but they they're very polite and they don't say anything I think you're your own worst critic. I'm trying to get this finished so hard. I'm sorry I'm out of camera. I think I realized it at one point and just try to put it back into the space. There we go. Notice I'm not using curved needle. Those of you who've watched my video where I did the curved needle, I think I stabbed myself two or three times while I was filming it because I just, I, I like the curved needle when you go through the signatures. I don't like it when you have to pull it through the other side. When it goes through the paper, it's just, I don't like the curved needles. Some people are really good at them. I am not. I am so happy that's over. <laughs> you can't hear me, but I'm like, oh, I'm so, 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 so happy it's over. See how loosey-goosey it is? I did that on purpose. I had to make sure when I sewed my signatures in, they were all going the right direction because I had pockets in there. And we're done. <laughs> 